Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. Off camera, I did rest and I went back to this room where this martyr's body was at and activated it to cleanse myself. Focus on the goal. A bright future awaits. So I could have pre-buffed off camera. It's such a large part of the Pathfinder experience, they don't want to leave you guys out, so we're going to do it now before we continue. Always be ready for the worst. We're all set. I'll go Let's ahead. rock and roll. Of course, there's the exit. Watch this be the end. <laughs> I'll end buffing for nothing. The legendary banner of the Crusaders is right in front of you. A drop of blood falls onto it from... where? The wound on your chest must have reopened. It's now bleeding again. You touch Amade's holy banner to brush away the scarlet droplet when you freeze abru abruptly. All of a sudden, you're aware of your own powers. You're no longer a grain of sand resisting the countless armies of the Abyss. You are something greater. Like Amade once rejected her, her humanity to ascend and gain divinity, you're ready to take your first step on the path to gaining power. What will your power look like? Alright, we have a few options here. And we are going to go Azada. A rebel and a fighter for freedom and good, the Azada acts on instinct and trusts in spontaneous decisions. The Azada easily befriends those who don't fit into the neat ranks of the official crusade and does not issue commands, rather inspires allies to fight. The dragon companion, at third rank, Azada gets a dragon as an animal companion. Unlike normal animals of its kind, animal companions hit dice, abilities, skills, and feats advance as the Azada gains mythic ranks. And superpowers. Azada can choose from her superpowers to enhance herself, or himself. In our case, our next mythic ability, we're going to grab Mythic Beast. The animal companion is just as mythic as you. Your animal companion gains a bonus to its strength, dexterity, and constitution equal to half your mythic rank plus one. Its attacks now ignore damage reduction except neutral. Uh, Challenge Evil is very thematic for our build, Blessed Bane. I don't think the Azada should get command, considering the description for Azada says it doesn't issue commands, so... See a little dragon companion right there. Little fairy dragon, I think. Uh, the wound in your chest closes and the drops of blood spilled on the Sword of Valor burst into transparent flames. A wave of fire rushes out from the blood and across the entire banner, transforming it and emblazoning it with new colors. Power descends upon you, suffusing your mortal body, remaking it in its image. It fills your body up to the brim, breaking bones and tearing muscles while at the same time healing them. You raise your head, acutely aware that the wind of freedom will be at your back, from now until eternity. A mess of an army. 
<laughs> if our crusade turns into a full-blown circus, at least it'll make me feel like a serious paladin in comparison. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. Angel, Azata, or something else. As long as you don't forget your humanity. I'm sure the crusade will only benefit from having a commander like you. The priest smiles enthusiastically. What an interesting turn of events. Such intriguing power. Boy, if you should suddenly expire, I would be happy to dissect your remains. Now is not the time to linger. We can reflect on events later. Now is the time to act. Okay, thought maybe it bugged out. Sweet, the Crusaders are starting to carry their own weight. <laughs> Good for them. A mortal gnat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Milady, this creature is about to die. Shouldn't you? See, Suture? Shouldn't has no place here. I've waited for a very long time, but now the hour has come to turn my ideas into reality. I still have things to do in Canabris, but you must leave. Go to the old laboratory. I have a special task for you. A laboratory? I hate that foul place, but I dare not disobey you, my lady. Forgive me this little masquerade. Yenio says in a different voice. One well, that sounds vaguely familiar. Suddenly the illusion vanishes. Not before. I am a Rilu Vorlish, also known as the architect of the world wound. There is something off about the stranger's appearance. Like you're seeing only half of a painting, looking at her with one eye closed. Her silk dress and expensive jewelry are at her odds with a set of unfamiliar tools in her ink-smudged hands. What are we meant to discuss with one of the key figures in our enemy's army, I wonder? Watch it! She's deadlier than a dozen demons. The betrayer of humanity. Her words are poison and lies. Oh, Lady Arilu. I, Nenyo, am your most devoted admirer. Your research is an invaluable contribution to the development of science on Galarion. And this experiment with a world wound is simply groundbreaking. May I please have your autograph? You know what, Nenio? Before this is over, I'm going to try and get you that autograph. Look for Marie Lu, and Nenio falls silent. You've handled the power of the Sword of Valor well. Such artifacts are almost like living creatures, and they react to their own kind, shall we say. The Sword of Valor once belonged to a mere mortal who became a goddess. It seems to see something kindred in you. Touching you has left the sword irreversibly changed. Now it is your banner, not Iomide's. Although perhaps it will still stop the demons from teleporting to the city as before. Uh, what happened to Yenio? The Yaniel you freed from the dungeon was merely a mask. Sometimes I like to wear the guise of my fallen enemies, to study them from the inside. The real Yaniel has been gone for a long time, but unfortunately for her, not permanently. Her lot is far more frightening than the one I showed you. Perhaps you will learn the truth one day, but for now, it isn't necessary.
feel like both these options are going to take us to the same dialogue, so I'm going to pick three instead. They've helped me twice already. In Canabras, when we fell into the caves. And here, pointing the way to the Sword of Valor. Why would a half-demon, Iskari's favorite, ever do such a thing? I'm creating something. Building. Studying how the land lies. Laying the foundation. I am called the Architect for a reason. You don't deserve the name. Architects are creators. They build things. What have you created? A hole between the worlds? A wasteland in place of a flourishing country? Millions of deaths? You are no architect. You are nothing but a vandal. I create... How shall I explain it to you? Events. Phenomena. Concepts. My building site is the entire multiverse. You wouldn't call an architect a vandal just because he started by digging some foundations, would you? Now, I'm not asking oh. you to trust me. That would be unforgivably stupid. But I suggest, just suggest, that you search, analyze, think. What happened in old Sarkoris? What is the world wound? What is happening to you? Search for your answers. And for now, farewell. I didn't mean a fat finger to the continue button there. Um, she was just saying that she wasn't talking to Socio for him to be quiet. Yet another obstacle. Oh, we are back in combat. And some of the enemies are just straight up exploding. Alright. We won't fall here. You I swear it. Be gone, fiend! <laughs> It's gonna level everybody up real fast. All right, so for Sila, abundant casting would be really good on a paladin since they get so few spells as is. But they also don't get a lot of really good spells. They usually, use it for self buffing, and their self buffs last a long time. So I don't see a good reason to get abundant casting on the paladin. I mean, I'm sure there's an argument to be made for it. But instead, what we're going to get her is Thundering Blows. Uh, the sound of your blows is powerful enough to damage even without piercing through enemy defenses. Once per round, when your melee attack misses the target, you deal 2 to 6 plus 1 to 6 per 2 mythic rank sonic damage to all enemies in, ten, in a 10 foot radius. And then Regil is going to get Unrelenting Assault. As long as you keep fighting, the power of your melee attacks keeps growing. Every turn, as long as you make at least one melee attack, you gain a stacking plus two bonus to damage rolls with melee weapons, up to a maximum of plus ten that lasts until the end of combat. Then Sosiel... Alright, so going forward... Last Stand, Improved Abundant Casting, Enduring Spells, and Greater Enduring Spells. Okay, that, that'll work. We're going to get Last Stand first, because it's just so good. A mission is too important to fall in battle, and your mythic powers let you endure unbelievable things. Once per day, when your HP drops low, you become unkillable. For two rounds, you become immune to damage that would make you unconscious. And then for Lan here, I think there's only two options left for him that I really want. I mean, he'll probably get last stand at some point as well. But the bigger they are, ranging shots, and I think that's all the bow abilities. 
Oh, distracting shots as well. So there's three. All right, we're going to go with the bigger they are here. Uh, the bigger they are, the easier they are to hit for your ranged weapon attacks. Again, a bonus to your attack rolls with ranged weapons equal to the penalty to armor class the target receives from their size, if any. So it's a little niche, but there's only so many bow abilities for him to take, and it's going to help, so can't go wrong with it. Nenio also has a few options. We do the same thing we're doing for Social, where she'll get improved abundant casting, enduring spells, improved enduring spells, or greater, whatever it's called, and last stand. Um, let's go ahead and get abundant casting here. Basically, Deviled our casting's a phantasmal killer. Alright. Let's take a look at Ivory real fast, too. And my mount stats. Yeah, he's getting plus two from the mythical beast feat. Or mythical ability that my main character took. Does Ivory get that, too? No. Alright, so what all does it get? Weapon focus tail. Improved critical bite. Weapon focus on arm strike. Improved initiative. Improved critical tail. Lightning reflexes. Power attack. So I'm not going to go through and read all these again, uh, because we have selected all of these feats at some point for all of our other companions, except for lightning reflexes. You get a plus two bonus on all reflex saving throws. Also, the performance out here is terrible. Okay, Breath Weapon. Uh, not affected by the target spell resistance. I can see this being really good. Except if you hit your own allies with it. Oh yeah, there's also a few things I haven't read for my main character as well. Under Mythic Path. Alright, so this has to be a visual bug, because we just looked at Bucephalus, and he's getting the plus two from Mythic Companion. I don't know why it says Mythic Charge here. Alright, so we have Summon Mastodon. Uh, this ability summons a Mastodon for one minute. Summon monsters appear where you designate and act according to the initiative check results. They attack your opponents to the best of their ability. This should be Mythic Companion. Already Red Dragon Companion. Uh, Song of Heroic Resolve. Zana starts a performance that grants all allies within 50 feet a luck bonus on all saving throws equal to half her mythic rank. Whenever an ally under this effect makes a successful saving throw, that ally is healed for a number of hit points equal to 2 to 6 plus Azana's mythic rank. Then Freedom's Child. On the second mythic rank, mythic characters that draw their power from Freedom become closer to the Azanas that live in Elysium, gaining resist electricity 20 and plus 4 bonus to their saving throws against mind affecting effects. Or to kill, uh, you don't die until your total number of negative hit points becomes equal to or greater than double your constitution score. I think we've read the rest of these. Ready for anything? He's getting off. All right. I don't know why the frame rate out here is so terrible. I know the way. No reason to pause. Do not fear. Do not fear. me. Mind over muscle. Oh. An expected Oh, Sila's getting messed up.
we try oh, is not even oh, oh, performance is lacking. You are lacking. Huh. Alright, let's fix her up real fast. That. Darn it. Bring back the space bar mechanic, darn it. I'm all I will ears. lend you my aid. Yeah, that should be good enough. Let's do this. Alright. Citadel's command. Alright, so that's by the way we have to go. Together, we stand. I will help where I can. Just realize I didn't pop that when I did all the other buffs. As it should be. Something over there. We will win this war. We are the light. They are the darkness. Kneel before me. Fall. Endure this. I'll remove this obstacle. Oh, hang in there, Reginald. Focus fire, cut these guys down. Please and thank you. Let's try this one. Speak with your A bright future awaits us. This was simple enough. All right. A tough little fight. The goddess protects us. Can't hide from me. But we still came out on top. Ooh, a longsword plus one. Just what we're missing. Alright, let's get back to the tower. That is not far. I said Bucephalus' legs are a little messed up. Got his his Healy's equipped, just sliding around the map. <laughs> Looks like my main character is riding a taxidermied horse around. To battle, my friends. Loxus Marauder. Well, first, let's see what we got. Headcracker. Whenever the wielder of this plus two mithril light mace lands a first hit against a new target with it, the enemy has to pass a fortitude saving throw or become stunned for one to three rounds. Oh, there's a whole bunch of enemies. All right, uh, let's go ahead and haste up here. Oop. Into the fray. Press the attack. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Oh, mind fog. That's no good.
Wait, does summon Mastodon replace my other summon? I don't see it. That's a big problem. This guy's are chaotic evil, so let's go ahead and pop this as well. It looks like I got rid of my other summon when I got summon Azada, or summon Mastodon. Which is a great band, by the way. But also, I'm gonna really like the. Tell me, and let I'll me do help. It. Azada summon. I'll go ahead. Oh, what's going on over here? He's okay. Now let's go ahead and use this on Bucephalus, though. Too bad no one can see it. He's doing a little worse for wear. Let's go throw out our Mastodon, I guess. Or not. Throw out our Mastodon, please. Throw out our Mastodon. There we go. Took a few tries, but we, we got it figured out, I think. Holy crap. Alright. It's a full-grown Mastodon. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Banged up, but we're doing fine, I think. You won't survive <laughs> me. You are nothing before. My will is resolute. So the big doors are probably the way we have to go. So we'll go this way first. No reason to pause. As it should be. Meditate on your mistakes. Might make you feel better. His chest's right there. What does it say? This room looks like a little. This room looks a little cleaner than the rest of the fortress. It's probably the warden's bedroom. That is not far. All right, I'm actually gonna call the episode here. The feeling we're gonna go through here. We're gonna fight a boss. When we fight the boss. We're gonna immediately get thrown into a ton of dialogue. And 
I don't want this episode to be an hour and a half long. So, we'll go to this door in the next one, take out, I assume, the Warden. And then have a lot of conversations. But for now, thanks for watching. Up to you guys in the next one.